Before I start this comic book movie feud bracket episode, I want to thank Jay Garrick. He's a member of the Feud Nation. He's gone above and beyond to help me with these scripts. I usually do this show solo. The lighting, the audio, which isn't that great, the video, which is all right, the editing, everything else that goes into it's all me. And you know, I'm fine with that for the most part, but things get busy. So knowing that there's people out there like Jay who are passionate enough about the show to help me out with the script on occasion, which I have to rewrite a lot of because it's trash, but thank you anyways, Jay. That means so much to me. Joking aside, he's been doing a great job and please check out his channel Firebird Films to see some of his wacky antics. I don't watch this show personally because I have far too much porn to get through in the day and there's just no time left. That out of the way, let's get started with the episode proper. We're doing the MCU Phase 1. MCU, of course, stands for Magical Climaxing Unicorn, as you already know. We're talking Iron Man, we're talking Incredible Hulk, Captain America, Thor. We're gonna save the Avengers for an ensemble a few down the road. That said, let's get started on Movie Fuse. how to round up a great cast for its pictures. That's what I'm doing. I'm rounding them up. I'm lassoing them. There's only so many ways I can talk about cast before it gets stagnant, okay? I'm doing my best. Robert Downey Jr. shines as Tony Stark, aka Iron Man. It's impossible to see anybody else playing this character, and just from watching this movie alone, it's not hard to see why. The side cast is also excellent, featuring Jeff Bridges, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Terrence Howard. However, in Iron Man 2, Terrence is replaced with Don Cheadle because he wanted too much of that Robert Downey money. It's a bit of a jarring change, but Don has grown on me over the course of these films. Mickey Rourke and Sam Rockwell chewed up the scenery in the second installment, although Mickey's whiplash goes MIA for a large chunk in the middle. Rourke was pretty boring, didn't do much. Chris Hemsworth is great as Thor. He did the impossible and actually managed to be a pretty interesting hero despite the fact that Thor isn't nearly as relatable as someone like Iron Man. The side characters aren't that exciting, minus a little Cat Dennings. Natalie Portman is just another run-of-the-mill love interest, but Tom Hiddleston was a fantastic Loki, and Anthony Hopkins did a great job playing Odin. Edward Norton was disappointing as Bruce Banner, aka the Hulk. To be Emily Blunt with you for a second, I still prefer Eric Bana's version. Yeah. I said it. Liv Tyler's here, she cries, of course. That's what she does and she does it well. It's in her contract. I have to cry in at least 50% of the movie or I walk. William Hurt does a pretty good job here running the dumbest military of all time. I said this in my best and worst video, but what kind of military would set up a trap on a college campus? Whatever. Speaking of military, let's saddle up and ride on over to Captain America. Yeah, I'm doing the cowboy theme for some reason. Don't know why. Chris Evans made a damn good first impression in that mediocre film. It's nice to see Tommy Lee Jones attempting to care about acting these days. Haley Atwell plays the love interest, but without Winter Soldier building on the story this movie set up, the characters, including Cap himself, don't stand out much. Agent Smith himself, Hugo Weaving, is here, playing a pretty generic villain named Period Face. That's not what it is, it's Red Skull, but I have the humor of a seven-year-old boy. Let's move on to the next round. There's a little bit of everything in the acting department, so it's really taster's choice. The one thing I will say about the story of the phase one films is they're very easy to follow. They're very simple, very low key. Very low, low key, yeah, you see what I did. If there is one exception to what I just said, it would be Iron Man 2. Black Widow and Nick Fury are in this simply to help set up the Avengers. Most of the film feels that way, actually. The stories in general are pretty generic and don't bring much new to the table, but Iron Man and Thor still manage to impress me. Thor does start to slog a bit in the middle while Iron Man stays consistently engaging. Captain America didn't do a damn thing right for me. I just found it too intentionally cheesy to take seriously. Which is already a stretch considering the protagonist is a grown man who wears an American flag as a uniform and throws a shield that comes back to him like a boomerang. The Incredible Hulk is certainly more fast paced than the previous one, delivering plenty of action and hardly ever slowing down. It just wasn't very memorable. And as I finish reading the script that Jay wrote for me, I am just now noticing that none of the stories were actually talked about. The plots themselves were never actually explained. It was just a overall kind of feeling of the pace. So, nice work Jay. You can show yourself out. Back to your computer and write me more scripts because I don't have any standards on this show, buddy. Keep it up. There are some solid tunes in these movies. 
especially Iron Man with that ACDC action. The scores themselves are well done too, albeit a bit drowned out. It's a shame that none of the main hero themes make it to the next installments of their films. Is that true? I had some ass clown write this script for me, so I'm at his beck and call. What he says I have to take as the gold standard. Oh, this was a huge mistake. Alan Silvestri did a good job with Captain America sticking with the 40s vibe. As nice as it is to talk about music, the effects are really what give us that juicy conversation. He put juicy in the script. All right, let's not, let's not do that again. The effects are hit and miss in these early Marvel movies. Iron Man held back on using a lot of CG, which was a smart move, instead blending it with practical effects. That goes for two as well. It all looked excellent. The Hulk and Abomination were pretty sketchy, but I suppose their fight at the end was fun for someone. Thor's world Asgard looked pretty fantastic on screen, while Captain America was definitely the worst of the bunch. It was just so damn campy. Too much camp for me. I get they were going for that adventure Indiana Jones kind of style, but it didn't work. I could see the green screen coming through. I don't want to rip on it too much since there are some fun moments like the motorcycle chase. Does anybody really care what I think though? I mean, if we really break it down, does anybody really care? Let's go to the conclusion and then you can make your voice heard and see who moves on. Assistant Tief in the contest! Iron Man is the clear winner. Without a doubt, Robert Downey Jr. put Marvel on the map, along with John Favreau, the director, who clearly had a hand in things, and the person who cast Robert Downey Jr. should uh, be living in a mansion somewhere. I don't know who that was. All in all, I think Marvel got off on an okay foot. I'm gonna have way juicier things to talk about in the Marvel phase. We're seeing juicier again in the script. Come on, guys. Anyway, uh, vote, comment below if you want. I, you know, it's your life. You do what you want with it. I'm, I'm just up here telling you what to do and you need to listen to me because now it's my life. Your life is mine now. And remember, this is more than just reviews. This is movie feuds. And I have like 16 of these to go still. Jesus. Jay better get off his ass and start writing.